Hello again. We're solving linear systems with substitution this time. And basically, this is just a way to do or to solve uh, two equations, see where they cross, without ever graphing. Because I guess people got tired of graphing and they wanted to figure out an arithmetic way of doing it. Actually, I could probably show you how that came about. But we're going to work with substitution right now first, then we'll get to what we have to. Now, in substitution, what is important to realize is this that you have to get one of the variables by itself in at least one of the equations. That means you have to either get an x or a y by itself in one of the equations. That's, what, that's what's key in substitution. Make sure you do that. And then substitution isn't so bad. A lot of students forget that, though, and then that's why they mess up. So do I have an x or a y by itself in one of these two equations? And the answer is, yes, I do. I've got y equals 3x by, plus 2. Y is by itself in this equation. That's all I really need in order to start a substitution problem. As long as I have an x or a y by itself in one of the two equations, I can start a substitution problem. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to substitute this equation, the first one, into the second. And I'll show you how I do it. So I go ahead and I work with this mess. x plus 2y equals 11. I have x plus 2. Now, here's why substitution is so cool. And actually, I like it better than the, the next method we're going to show. I didn't like it at first. I liked the other method before better. But this one I like better as I continue to math. y is next to the 2. But y is also equal to 3x plus 2. So I can substitute, instead of having this y in, I can put in 3x plus 2 instead. Now here's what's also key in substitution. Whatever you substitute in, make sure you put it in parentheses. So the y is actually equal to 3x plus 2. Make sure you put it in parentheses. Very big. Because students will say, oh yeah, 2 times 3x is 6x, but then they'll just put plus 2, but it's not plus 2, it's 2 times 2. And you'll forget to do that if you don't put the parentheses. So get in the habit of putting in parentheses. So 2 times y, but y is 3x plus 2, and it's equal to 11. Now all you do is you solve for x. x plus 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times 2 is 4 equals 11. 1x plus 6x is 7x. plus 4 equals 11, then subtract 4 on both sides, and then divide 7. Seven. 7x equals 7, or 7 times x equals 7. Now divide by 7 on both sides. x equals 1. We figured out the x value, but there's also a y value. Now, Students ask me, well, well, what do I do? I mean, does it make a difference which one I substitute it into? And the answer is no. It doesn't make a difference which one you substitute it into, but it is easier if you pick one over the other. Now, what are you trying to solve for? You already have the x. Now you're trying to figure out the y. Well, this one already has the y by itself. If you want to do this one, then you have to subtract and divide by 2. But this one already has y by itself, so go ahead and do that. y equals 3x plus 2. But the x is not x anymore, it's 1 plus 2. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. Now, if your teacher is very picky, what they're going to ask you to do, pardon me, is put it in coordinate form. So that's not really a big deal. You put it in a set of coordinates. The x value goes first, which is 1. The y value goes second, which is 5. Now let me explain what we're actually doing here, because I do this and students can kind of follow along with the math, but sometimes they don't have any idea what we just did. They just think, oh, okay, what am I doing? What you're basically doing is taking these two equations and you're graphing them without graphing, and you're finding where the equations cross, again, without graphing. You're doing it arithmetically, and you figure out it crosses at 1, 5. Now you could go ahead and Solve for y in both of them, and plot both of them, and you're going to find the same solution by graphing. But this is a way of doing it without graphing. And a lot of students like that because some students, let's face it, just don't like graphing. So that's the answer to the first one. And we're going to try the second one. 
Now, I said that a big initial step in substitution was to make sure that you had one of the variables in one of the equations by itself. The problem is that one of the equations in one of the variables is now by itself. The x has a y with it, y has an x, x has a y, y has an x. What I want to do is get at least one of the variables by itself. And here's where I ask my students, well, what do you do? Which one are you going to get by itself? So, well, I'm going to get this x by itself. Well, if you do, then you're going to have to subtract 6y and divide by 4. No. Okay, subtract 4x and no. Uh, subtract x and divide by no. Add 2y. Yes. If you just add 2y, you got the x by itself. It's the easiest of the four. So do the easiest of the four. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to add 2y to both sides. And when I do that, this new equation is x equals 6 plus 2y. It's not 8y. It's not 8. It's just 2y plus 6. These are the equations we're going to use. That's garbage now. This one is the same as this one, except we just rewrote it, and we wrote it nicer. This is garbage. This is what we're using, these two equations right here. Now what I want to do is I want to substitute into the nasty looking equation. Okay, so I've got 4 times x, but x is actually 2y plus 6. So I've got 2y plus 6. Here's where I wait for my students to say something. I've got to just tap my foot. So parentheses, Mr. Shadi, I'm like, yes, you got to put the parentheses. Don't forget to put parentheses when you're using substitution for linear systems. It makes it so much easier. Students will say, oh, that's 8y, and then they'll leave this as 6. No, it's not 6. It's 4 times 6, which is 24. So back to what I was going to say. 4 times x, but that's my x, plus 6y equals 4. Go ahead and distribute and solve, and you'll be good. 4 times 2y, 8y. 4 times 24, uh, excuse me, 4 times 6 is plus 24. Plus 6y equals 4. 8y plus 6y is 14y. Fourteen y plus twenty four equals four. Now let's finish it off. Fourteen y equals negative twenty. Divide by fourteen on both sides. y equals a negative divided by a positive is negative. We're not going to leave this as 20 over 14. What is 20 over 14 reduced to? It's 10 over 7. Don't change it into a decimal. Well, I don't like this problem. It's difficult. Yeah, it's difficult, but still necessary to go ahead and do. So that's what we're going to do. So it's negative 10 sevenths. Okay. I'm going to substitute this into this equation, because it's already solved for x. x equals 2y plus 6. Put it in parentheses when you're substituting. Students have problems multiplying 10 sevenths and 2 together. It, it's not that bad if you just make it 2 over 1. 2 times negative 10 is negative 20. over 7, plus 6. Not a very friendly problem, like I said, but it's good to get difficult practice in too, because I want to always put in fractions, once in a while. Okay. Now, that's 6 over 1. I needed to have a denominator of 7 to add or subtract properly, so what do I have to multiply that by? I multiply by 7, but what I do on the bottom of a fraction, I have to do on the top of a fraction. So 6 over 1 is the same thing as 42 over 7. Like I said, not a fun problem, but nonetheless. x equals, now when you're adding or subtracting fractions with similar denominators, the denominator stays the same, and negative 20 plus 42 is 22. 
You can't reduce that. So x equals 22 over 7. Write it in coordinate form. I think we're going to do that up here. Woo! Difficult problem with fractions, etc. Probably the most difficult type of substitution problem you get, especially since it had fractions, but nonetheless, very great practice. With that said, we'll talk a little bit more about substitution, and we'll move on to elimination afterwards. For now, though, have a great day. Goodbye.